Good morning. Welcome to worship here in the sanctuary and welcome to those are, who are watching online. Today I invite you to take time quietly to listen to the chime of our recently repaired bell. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Oh, are you singing? Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> please enjoy the special music from the, the female praise team today. <laughs> morning. Please rise for the call to worship. God created each of us as unique individuals. Although we are different, we are all important parts of the body of Christ. God intentionally made us different and unique. Today, let us celebrate the diverse ways God is reflected in Please join in the hymn, One Bread, One Body. It's number 620.
please join me in the opening prayer? Creator God, you have composed the world of differing elements and celebrated its goodness. Open our hearts and minds to discover the vast diversity of your creation and to find our place of belonging. Open our eyes to see your divine image reflected in the faces around us. Open our spirits to honor and praise you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our epistle lesson today is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 31. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we be begin a four-week sermon series called Celebrate. Today the theme is Celebrate Diversity. So we have, so there's five Sundays in July, so four of them will be these celebrating different things. And then on July 31st, we're going to celebrate Christmas in July. <laughs> so please mark that on your calendars. <laughs> The next day is my birthday, so I don't mind. I'll celebrate Christmas, and then I'll celebrate my birthday. For just as the body is one and has many members, so it is with Christ. As the body of Christ, we are called to celebrate the diverse ways God is reflected in each and every person. All must be celebrated. I think this passage that Jean read from 1 Corinthians is familiar to most of you. Right? <laughs> Paul, I think Paul was a genius using the body as the illustration in this passage. Like, it's universal. Anyone would understand what he's saying back in 51 CE, as they call it now, and in 2022. Even John Wesley would understand it. So it's such a great illustration. Because, you know, everyone has body parts, no discrimination there. Everyone can imagine what it would be like to not have a certain body part or organ or maybe you broke a wrist or something and you understand what it's like to not have the use of one of your body parts. I had an issue with my thumb over the last two months and man I couldn't I couldn't pinch anything. I couldn't my right thumb I just couldn't. So I went to the doctor, it's better now, but you know, thumbs, they're so important. You can't do much without them right? Today I think though we could try to make a new illustration, a new image for 2022. Like what if the Philadelphia Eagles 
had a team made up of all Jalen Hurts. Well, who would catch the ball? Or what if they all were Jake Elliott? He is the kicker, or whatever you call him. Then it would be so boring because the only way to score, um, you could only score three points at a time. But of course, there's always the example of a puzzle. Every piece is important. And you know what it's like if you get to the end and you don't have that last piece. It's frustrating. So today I have for you in a basket over here that you can get after you take communion is pieces of a puzzle that I did that did not have all the pieces. So I reframed how I thought about that puzzle and used it for an illustration today. So take a piece, look at that piece. Remember, you are just as unique as this puzzle piece. All are important. Many people struggle, I think, with issues of self-esteem and perhaps self-worth. Maybe not all the time, but sometimes we might feel unworthy. And we do that because we compare ourselves to others, thinking that someone else is more talented or has prettier hair or nicer clothes. Well, that was not God's intent. God has created each of us to be unique and special. God wants us to be unique and special. We all are part of the kingdom of God, and we are all needed in God's kingdom. All must be celebrated. All people are sacred and important to the body of Christ exactly as they are. You are sacred and important to the body of Christ exactly as you are. Paul said people don't have to change or become the same as another person to drink of the spirit. As he said, for in, in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body and we were all made to drink of one spirit. So we all have breathed received the Holy Spirit, we all are worthy of that. And it's in our differences that we come to the one spirit. We don't have to be a certain way. We have to be ourselves. This was important for the people of Corinth. That city was quite diverse. It had uh, all different religions celebrated there. It was a um, trade city. It had a port and people would, boats would come in and unload and boats would come in and load and take stuff away. Um, there were people who were rich and people who were poor. People who were educated and people who were not. It was just very diverse. And so uh, there may have been rumblings within the church uh, that somebody's better than somebody else. So they needed to all be valued for who they were and that diversity is what was a gift to that church so god's vastness in diversity uh, is reflected in the diversity of god's creation this morning at 8 30 at the gazebo we could sit in the midst of nature and all that God had created on that particular space by the river. So each of us is created to be different, and we are to celebrate our differences. So some of you have vegetable gardens? Yes? No? <laughs> I don't either. Those of you who have vegetable gardens, there in the garden, 
you experience the example of the diversity of creation and the awesome awesomeness of creation. That is, unless you planted only lettuce. Then when you have your salad, you have lettuce and lettuce, and it's quite boring. People can remain different and still be united by the Spirit. In fact, that what, that's what makes for a healthy church. Sometimes, especially in the church, we downplay our differences. You know, we try to make everyone seem the same, make sure everyone is equally loved, and that just kind of makes us all lukewarm. We're not hot, we're not cold, we're just in the middle. So we need to celebrate our differences. Differences are not problems to be overcome. They are gifts to be celebrated. Our differences allow and enable us to work together like a body with different parts that work together. Paul warns against comparing ourselves to others as though one set of body parts is better than another. Paul encourages us to celebrate who we are. Just as the foot should not wish to be a hand because a foot has been uniquely created to be a foot, so should we celebrate each person that comes into the body of Christ. Yeah, the differences may be challenging. It may take us a while to figure out the gifts of this person or that person, but all are welcome, all are celebrated. Isn't it great that we're not like each other? Ha. We all desire to live openly and authentically if we really break it down. We don't want to have to worry about being like someone else. So do you think in your mind that um, you see yourself as less than when you compare yourself to someone else? So let's stop comparing. Let's reframe, reframe these differences. So think about something that you worry about, that you would like to change, something that you're not happy with. For example, for me, it's my shape. Since 2020, since October 2020, my body has changed. I'm shorter by three inches, and I lost 20 pounds. So. 20 pounds is okay, but I'm not happy with this. I don't like who I see in the mirror. I don't recognize who I see in the mirror. And I'm not happy because my clothes don't fit. Some, the shirts are too big. They hang off my shoulders. Um, some things are too long. <clears throat> like my stoles. Um, and so, uh, I need to reframe how I think about how I have changed. And what can I do to reframe my thinking? There we go, sewing machine. What else? I, don't look in the mirror. <laughs> I can go shopping for new clothes. <laughs> Reframing is changing your mind and having a new perspective. So if we're uh, moping around because we're not like someone else, change your mind. Just as Carol Riley, the choir director in Medford, she, we sang those wrong notes and she finally said, change your mind, and we did, and we were beautiful. So maybe you, Think about today, think about something you would like to reframe about yourself. Do you compare yourself to a sibling, maybe, an older or younger sibling? Or do you compare yourself with 
uh, the Joneses next door, you know, keeping up with the Joneses. Give yourself the chance to reframe that. See what opportunities are there rather than uh, hurdles or barriers. And then the same goes for the church, for comparing this church with another church. It's important to recognize that one church is not a greater part of the body of Christ than another. God equips each congregation to serve the community in their various and different ways. So we are not like other churches. We are not a large church with a large building and a large praise band. We are not a church set on a large property that can hold many outside activities and concerts. We are not a church with large overflowing Sunday school classes, children's Sunday school. We're really not large. All those things are great. Other churches are like that. But we are called to be authentic, to be the First United Methodist Church of Mays Landing. I have to get my phone. I forgot I needed this. I, subs or I don't subscribe, I don't have to pay for it, but I get daily uh, inspiration, and, and like a newsletter from Car uh, Carrie, Carrie Newhoff, right? Yeah, Carrie Newhoff, he's, uh, and it, uh, he researches churches and leadership, and he puts together newsletters about how to be a leader today, 2022, and what things work and what things probably don't work uh, for any kind of church or, or any kind of other leader uh, in a leadership position. So today, I looked, whoop, I looked at the... the <coughs> The title for today's uh, newsletter, The Growing Church or the Mega Church in Your City is Not Your Enemy. Goes right along with what I'm talking about. Who are you really competing against in ministry? He asks. And then he lists things that we are not competing with, like the mega church in your city or online. That's what they do. That's not what we do. Those kind of people go to that kind of church. And then there's the church next door. We don't compete with the church next door because we, we're Methodist <laughs> and not Presbyterian. No. Um, In-person attendance. And this is something we have to get used to. We're not competing um, to have, competing with online to have in-person people. People are coming in person and online. Churches, um, churches kind of have this, this, uh, competition between how many in church, how many online. We're, we're just all the church. And then he finally says, the real competition that we face is indifference. Someone said, I forget who it was, the opposite of love is not hate. It's indifference. People wake up, they don't think about church, or Saturday night they're not preparing what they're going to wear, or where they're going to go to brunch after church. It's just not on their mind. And that's difficult to fight. So we are not to call, uh, to compare ourselves with any other church in fact, we are, to, we are called to be the very best First United Methodist Church of Mays Landing ever. What will God 
have us do in the future, whatever it is, it will be just right for us. God knows who we are. God knows what we're capable of, even if we have forgotten. God will place in our life as a church the people and the resources for the ministries to come. We may be surprised by what that is, or I really should say we will be surprised by what that is, but let us celebrate whatever we understand God is calling to us. So here, First United Methodist Church, we have all the ingredients for a ministry stew. Broth and meat and veggies and seasoning. Yeah, we sure do have seasoning. Leaders, helpers, teachers, techies, cooks, bakers, and many more. We are the body of Christ. We're supposed to be unique. Each one is different from the other, but we are all part of one body. We need not strive to be the same. We need to strive to have the same mind, the mind of Christ. We have been filled with the Holy Spirit. We're still in the season of Pentecost, and the Holy Spirit will guide us. And God will weave and knit us all together with the church universal as we become every day the First United Methodist Church of May's Landing. We don't need to change. Well, maybe we might, but we don't need to be different people. We have within us everything we need, and we need to celebrate who we are and whose we are. Eugene Peterson writes in his version of the Bible called The Message, um, two of the verses that are in the passage today. But I also want you to think about how this keeps your significance from getting blown up into self-importance. For no matter how significant you are, it is only because of what you are a part of. No part is important on its own. So let's celebrate our diversity. Let's celebrate our unique gifts. And let's celebrate who you are and whose you are. Thanks be to God. So, do we have a hymn? Yes. As we celebrate the holiday of, of this weekend, our independence, let us rise and sing America, which is found in our hymnal, or in the words are up on the screen.
today, bring who you are and what you have to God in gratitude. Just as God has graced us with diversity and difference, so too will our offerings bring back to God be diverse and different. With a spirit of celebration, give of yourself, just as you are, to God and to the community who gathers in Christ's name. Please join me in the offering prayer. God of creation, we are your body, each of us a different part, functioning together as your presence in the world. Bless our gifts and our differences today. Help us to see how our differences are our gifts. And may our offerings serve to draw ever wider the circle of this community. Amen. Let us come to our time of prayer. Um, my son and, and daughter-in-law have recovered from COVID. They're all doing well. And Quinn did not get it, and he's running around just like always. So today, let us pray for Peter Kachanik, who continues with health challenges. Also, uh, Hugo Perez Sr. is in the hospital, so let us pray for Hugo and for Ingrid. We pray for Patricia Pantoliano that she may have comfort as she is on hospice. And we pray for Kathy, George Chapman, Carol, Julie, Joanna, we pray for Pat Strobel and for Barbara and Duke Dowdy, for Mary M.J. Snyder, and for Robert and Luz Young. And today we pray for the family of Debbie Jones, who passed away. Uh, she is the sister-in-law of Fred and Barbara Adams. So let us hold that whole family in prayer. And then another praise, the twins that were born and one passed away, this the Peyton, the, the second twin, is now three pounds. So that's a praise. So let us go now to God in prayer. Gracious God, we are so grateful for the gift of our uniqueness. God, we ask that you continue to inspire us to celebrate who we are, each individual, who we are, and how we are part of your body, the body of Christ. Today, we pray for those that I have lifted up, and we pray for those who are on our hearts that have not been spoken for us. We pray for them at this time. God, our world needs so much help, so much, uh, so much prayer. We, we lift up the people in Ukraine and Russia, the people who are suffering from that war, we pray for justice in some way. We pray for those around the world who have difficulty with this weather that is so hot in some places and so rainy in others. God, we pray for any injustices that are felt in this country, any injustices that are real in this country. Bless us with wisdom and strength to reach out and make changes for those less fortunate. And today, God, we ask prayer for this church and its ministries and what will be in the future. And we ask that you help us to continue to celebrate 
who we are as the First United Methodist Church of May's Landing. We pray all this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come now to celebrate communion. Uh, if you're at home, uh, I invite you to get something, juice or juice and cracker or coffee and whatever, as we come to celebrate this uh, sacrament. Can you bring Is that the bread up? On the night before Jesus would be arrested and tortured and crucified, Jesus had a meal with his disciples in the upper room. They sat around a table, probably low to the ground, and they were kind of looked like they are lounging at that table. And when the meal began, Jesus took the bread broke the bread and said to his disciples take and eat this is my body broken for you and they finished their meal and were talking and then Jesus took the cup and lifted it up and said to them this is the cup of my blood shed for you, the cup of salvation. Drink this as often as you do. And so they celebrated that meal together. They remembered uh, what they had been through with Christ. And today we do the same. We remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. We become a member again of the body of Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon these simple gifts of bread and juice. Make them become for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Nourish us with this meal that we may go forth to make disciples, to bring others to know Jesus' sacrifice and your love. Amen. Today we will celebrate communion down in the front. Um, I will take the bread and dip it in the cup and then I will give it to you so no one has to touch anything else and again I, I invite you to come from the right side to come across and then as you leave go down the left side and take a puzzle piece you do not need to be a member of this church or of any church you just need the desire of a closer walk with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. All are welcome at this table. Come and eat.
Let us pray. Jesus, we are so grateful that you died so that we would be saved, that you had your particular gifts to give for us. And now we ask that you walk with us as we use our gifts to give to others. Gracious God, bless us with your Holy Spirit as we come to leave this place. Bless us that we have been nourished by the body of, and blood of Christ. Amen. No change there. <laughs> Same things we need all the time. Worship at the gazebo started today. It was a success. Um, you now have three different options for church. So no reason not to be a part of it. We've got online in the, here and in the gazebo. Happy Fourth of July, everybody. Vacation Bible School um, will be August 1st through 3rd. I'm sure you'll be hearing more. Um, and I think you can sign up the kids through DD. It'll be in the evening from 6.30 to 8.30. Um, so let's get a good showing. Great time. Uh, 6.30 to 8.30 is a tough time with kids. So let's bring them to a vacation Bible school. And the benediction. I, am right. I invite you to rise if you're able to receive this benediction. Remember you are unique. Think about what makes you unique and then give God thanks for that uniqueness. Go in the grace of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.